It doesn't take much effort at all these days to find an interesting success story if you want to find one. They're all over the place. All you have to do is just uh, look online and, and search for success stories. You'll hear about them from individuals too and stories that you share. And these stories that you might hear of and find range from grandiose rags to riches stories to uh, everyday folks overcoming smaller obstacles. Now we may experience, in fact we should experience, success stories in our own lives as well. For example, sometimes just figuring out a math problem or getting all the green lights uh, when we're trying to get from one place to another can be extremely satisfying. The title of my sermonette today is Succeed, but I won't be taking the time to share yet another success story with you. You can find those on your own, and I'm sure you'll uh, each be inspired by something a little bit different than the person sitting next to you. But as inspiring as these success stories can be, uh, instead I'd like to think about what uh, you and I can do every single day to make our own success stories. The ideas that I'd like to share are very simple, but most importantly, they're based in the teachings of the Bible. There are three simple parts that I'll be uh, talking about that lead to success. We must first choose a virtuous goal, and following that, we need to have faith. And with those two things firmly in hand, finally, we need to apply our own hard work. So let's take a look at how these concepts are expressed in the Bible. To get a start on the path to success, we have to make sure that we know what it is that we are really trying to succeed at. We could easily choose to accomplish a goal of doing harm or getting away with something that we shouldn't be really doing. But those types of things aren't the, the right types of goals to set. Our goals must be worthy. They must be virtuous. They must be directed by something that is righteous. So let's open up our Bibles and we'll go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and I'll read verses 19 and 20. Deuteronomy 30 beginning in verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days, for, uh, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. We are presented with choices every single day. Every moment involves little micro choices that you and I make. And each choice that we make, big or small, needs to be evaluated along these lines. Is the choice that we are making leading towards godly obedience and therefore life? Or are we making decisions that lead us away from God and therefore towards the end, which is death? When we align ourselves and submit to the will uh, of God, we place ourselves into God's care. And that is a wonderful, excellent place to be. We need to choose life, that virtuous goal. Let's go to Philippians 4 and read verses 8 through 9. Philippians 4, beginning in verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, 
whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. There are so many things that compete for our attention. The volume of media that barrages us, that we are exposed to every day is phenomenal. It's massive, the amount of information that we consume. Whether we expose ourselves to it willingly or not, it's all around us. So with that in mind, I want to ask you this question. What are the kinds of ideas that you allow to occupy your time? Are they virtuous ideas? Or are they distracting you from following God? The focus that we need to have are on the things mentioned here in Philippians. Justice, godliness, love, and truth. Things that are worthy. <laughs> we don't want to contaminate our, our ideas with things that are a waste of time that lead us away from God. We need to focus. When we set our goals on a virtuous outcome, we also need to make sure in that process that our focus is pure. Along that same lines, I'd like to turn over to Matthew 6 and read verse 24. Matthew 6 and verse 24. Jesus is speaking here, and he, he says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one, to the one, and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The source of our motivation is critical. If we are to be choosing a virtuous goal, what are we motivated by? Are we motivated by living according to godly virtues? Or are we motivated by achieving worldly success and worldly uh, wealth and, and desi worldly desires? It's an important question to ask. If we choose a goal that serves God, we do well. But if we are ultimately motivated by the worldly success, and we put that before being motivated just to be obedient to God, we ultimately will be faced with decisions that lead us away from God, not closer to Him. Our primary motivation needs to be obedience to God, to please Him, to live in the way that He has uh, commanded us to live. And the more of our attention that focuses on the same objective, the more powerful and effective we will be. We can't divide our attention and interests. If we focus it on the same thing, it becomes extremely powerful. If you've ever used a magnifying glass to uh, concentrate the power of the sun, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can take a magnifying glass that is maybe three or four inches in diameter, and it's just collecting that much sunlight on its surface. But when you take three or four inches of sunlight and direct it towards one tiny spot, that tiny spot becomes extremely hot. That's what focus is. Our, fo our focus, all of our efforts, if they are focused on one clear objective, uh, we will do well to achieve that. And we, come, we become very powerful in achieving that too. But when we divide our interests, we lose that potential of power. Our own efforts would be sabotaged if we have motivations that are against God. <clears throat> we also need to have faith. 
Once we align our will with God's and choose a virtuous goal, then we need to do something about it. And it starts with faith. Let's go to Psalm 37 and read verses 3 through 5. Psalm 37, beginning in verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you uh, the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. This is not the most traditional scripture that we read about when we read about faith, but it brings a lot of concepts together that I'm uh, talking about today in the context of success. When we set a worthy virtuous goal for ourselves, ones that are committed to uh, the way of God, then the next logical step is to trust in him to guide and direct our efforts. We pray about these things. We express our concerns and needs to God. And when we start believing in that successful outcome, we begin that path on uh, the way to fulfillment. Faith is the belief in something as being true and coming to pass before we actually have the physical evidence for it. When we have faith and trust in God, he is the one who will bring that success to pass. So that is the element of faith that we need to put into our lives. And of course, as we read here in Psalms, God is the one who will bring about the results. And many times we ourselves are powerless to do anything more. Now that we are faithful, and with a great goal in place, with the faith and trust in God that it will come about, we need to do one more thing. We have to get to work and do something about it. Let's go over to Ecclesiastes 11 and read verses 4 through 6. Ecclesiastes 11, beginning in verse 4. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand. For you do not know which will prosper, either this or that or whether both alike will be good. We need to apply our efforts. But if we are looking for a reason not to do something, it's very easy to do. We can always find some excuse that uh, may prevent us from doing some work. Maybe the office is about 50 degrees <laughs> and it's cold. That actually happened this week to me, and more so to my colleague Rob here. We will never find the perfect conditions to do our work. We have to overcome. We will find obstacles. Life is about overcoming these obstacles. We need to put our efforts behind our goals if we want to achieve something, regardless of the conditions and the obstacles that we face. We work with that. And we have to remember that God is the one who will make our efforts prosper. We can do nothing of ourselves to make it come to pass if it is against God's will. But if we don't do our part first, if we choose to set a virtuous goal and have faith that it will come to pass, but if we don't do anything beyond that, 
we cannot, we put God in a place where he can't help us. He can't do anything unless we apply our own efforts uh, towards our goals. Now, putting these three activities into action in our lives will lead to a desirable outcome. It will lead to success. It's, it's simple. There are numerous other formulas for success out there too. Uh, in fact, there's a whole industry that's built around how to help yourself succeed, how to succeed in business. There's so many places where you can look. The ideas that I'm sharing with you are by no means original. I've simply offered one way of seeing how to succeed through the teachings of the Bible. <clears throat> Choose a virtuous path, be faithful, and work hard. Hopefully, this is useful to you. But I've got one more thing that I want to add to that. While following these instructions will lead to a positive and desirable outcome, there's one more simple thing that we need to remember to do. It's almost too simple. We need to make sure to acknowledge the successes and the victories that we have won. If you want to be successful, don't forget to succeed. What do I mean by that? We have to set ourselves up to win. We have to set our sights on things we can accomplish. If we set our expectations too far out of reach, we won't ever be fulfilled. And we will become vulnerable to discouragement as a result. As an example, our goal as Christians is to become perfect. But we also know that it is impossible to do on our own during this life. Now, if we don't count any success in our lives until we become perfected, we're setting ourselves up for a life of discouragement and failure. Don't do that to yourself. Instead, just take one step at a time. If we succeed in overcoming one sin at a time, we can capture thousands or millions of victories. It's important to win, even if our successes are small ones. I'll cite one more scripture to you. This is from Zechariah 4, verses 9 through 10. During that time when the temple was being rebuilt, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple his hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord, which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. These individuals were very excited just to see a plumb line dropped because they knew that was the beginning of something big. You and I, too, are at that beginning point of something big taking place in our lives every day. Our journey through this life has a clear destination, but every one of us has a different path. For each step we take, let's succeed. <laughs>